um, I can recall just thinking, well, man, you know, do I want to do coffee? And that added so much money to it. And, you know, there are little things like that that when you can do those things and you know how to do them, um, they really add the kind of extras that make people want to come to your events. And that's just one small aspect, I think, of what we're going to be discussing here. There's so much to it and so much that you can really be doing that you really, if you, if you get the vision and you really understand what uh, Linda's talking about, you'll really be able to change how you do business, how you provide for your client, and then how you really look to do some things, I think, in the future and really start to tunnel your, your, your vision toward, um, you know, raising, you know, raising the standard with that. Um, Linda Hollander. Now, I'll tell you, I, I came in contact with Linda. I've been to you know, a number of her presentations, um, and uh, and and immediately, you know, upon hearing her uh, kind of this year, I said, well, you know, if I can possibly get her on the line uh, with our folks, then we definitely want uh, to have her because, again, um, everything that we can do to, to do things differently, I, I really want us to be able to do that. So, with that, Linda, um, welcome. And uh, I'm going to let you kind of talk about you, because you can do a better job of that than I can, and then uh, just just hit us with what you got. Okay. All right. So glad to be here with you. Thank you very much for coming. And, uh, you know, you are in the minority because most people don't take the time to listen to these trainings. Most people don't take the time to learn how to grow and change. And you realize that if you don't grow, then, you know, your competition is just going to pass you by and, you know, you're not really going to make a successful business. So thank you very much. I want you also to please focus on what we're saying and please be present. And if you can, wean yourself off of email and Facebook and, and the social media because this is really, really important information. Uh, and we will be taking questions. We are completely live here, and I love the interactivity of this kind of a forum, this kind of a webinar. So hi, I'm Linda Hollander. I was named by Inc. Magazine this year as the number one leading expert on corporate sponsorship, and I'm going to share some of the tips that I have learned in the last 13 years on how to get corporate sponsors and even why you want corporate sponsors. So let's get started. Also, please take out a pen. Please take out some paper because I'm going to give you a lot of writer downers um, that you're definitely going to want to make note of. So here is my promise to you. I'm going to give you the secrets of getting corporate sponsors. We're going to make your dreams a reality by while somebody else foots the bill. And you're going to tap into a 19 billion and growing cash reservoir because that is what sponsors are going to spend this year. Uh, sponsors will spend at least 19 billion dollars. It may even go up to 20 billion dollars. So there is a lot of money out there, and the spending on corporate sponsorships is going up faster than spending on traditional advertising, meaning uh, television and radio commercials and things like that. Uh, because sponsorship has a proven return on investment. So first I want you, I know you're seasoned professionals, but I want you to kind of get in touch with the big dream that you have. Why are you working so hard? Why did you start this particular business? What do you want to do? And what you can do is either write down your dream on a piece of paper or write it in uh, the chat box of the webinar. But write down your dream. Write down your goal, your big vision, that big, hairy, audacious goal that you have. And then I want you to ask yourself, why isn't that dream a reality yet? Why isn't that dream a reality? And I believe that these are the two most common reasons. The first one is a lack of awareness and exposure. And we could also say, since I'm talking to a lot of marketers in this particular training, lack of marketing. So that, that, that really marketing is about getting awareness and exposure. And then lack of capital. I believe that these are the most two common reasons why people don't really achieve those big dreams. So I want to tell you my personal story. And I want to share my dream with you. Uh, I started a business producing custom printed shopping bags. 
And uh, some of you may have heard of me. My brand name is Wealthy Bag Lady. And these are some of the bags that we have produced. Uh, our clients included Disney and I'm Pet Food. And you'll see Pepsi and Nissan and Sears. Uh, and, you know, I built with my best friend, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl is on the left. I am on the right. We built a multi-million dollar business out of shopping bags, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm very much a fan of entrepreneurship. I'm very much a fan of mastermind teams and really getting together with people that you like and respect and that amazing things happen in the kinds of groups that Charles has put together here. But I want to tell you a little bit about my life before uh, I, I started my own business. Basically, I was in a really bad dead-end job. I live in Los Angeles. I was fighting traffic every day to get to my office. And when I got to my office, I had to deal with really stupid office politics. I had to work with people who had no soul, who I didn't even like. I would eat lunch in my car and not really deal with the people that I worked with. I had a very abrasive relationship with my boss. And, you know, I had the heart and I had the soul of an entrepreneur and it was crying out. It really was. And I was living in a little rent-controlled apartment and uh, I would go down to my main mailbox because when you're living in a little apartment you know you kind of have that mailbox and I could never even imagine buying my own home at the time so I'm opening that mailbox with the key and my hand would literally shake because there were bills in that mailbox I could never ever afford to pay uh, and what I had done was I had maxed out all of my credit cards and I did that because in, when I was unemployed, I took out loans on my credit card. Uh, what I also want to tell you is that I started two businesses that failed. And that was also a drain on my finances. And it took me a long time to pick up the pieces of those businesses that failed. And my ego and my pride took such a big hit because I failed publicly. I told people, hey, I'm going to start these businesses and I'm going to make myself a success and I'm going to show all of you and man, oh man, you know, it just did not work out that way. So I understand the struggles that you've gone through. I understand the struggles that you are going through maybe and you know what? That's okay. That is absolutely normal to be going through those particular struggles. And everybody asked me, like, well, what's the difference between the failed businesses and the business that was a success? And the difference is I asked for help. I got mentorship. And that's why I love these kinds of trainings because, you know, in the business, this bag business that was the multi-million dollar business, I took every seminar, I took every training that I could find, and I would ask anybody for help. You know, in the failed businesses, I was young, I was stubborn, I was rebellious, and I said, I'm going to do it on my own. And, you know, nothing could be further from the truth. Nobody does it on their own. So at that time, in my personal life, I was in a relationship with an abusive man. And that relationship lasted for four years. And what led me there was really the fact that I had no self-confidence and that he really had the lion's share of the money. So I really didn't have that many choices. But luckily, one day I had an epiphany and said, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be the master of my own life. So that is when I decided to start my own business. And I was able to buy my first home as a single woman. I was able to travel the world and I was able to teach entrepreneurship. And I taught entrepreneurship to women in particular. And I want the men on this particular call to really stay with me because uh, I will be talking about the women's market from time to time, but uh, it is because that is my experience and the strategies about corporate sponsors are universal. So I knew I wanted to start a women's small business expo. The only thing was I didn't know if I had the money to pay for it because I was working out of a kitchen table and even sharing that kitchen table with my cat. 
I had absolutely no experience. I had never planned an event in my life. And I had no following. I had no audience. There was no fan base at all. So what I did was I put my cat on my database and my parents. You know, what were they going to say, right? So <laughs> even though I had all of those things against me, here's what I did. My first sponsors were Bank of America, Walmart, and IBM. Now that is with no experience and no following. And since then, my sponsors have included Epson, the printer company, Wells Fargo, FedEx, HealthNet, American Airlines, Staples, most recently Dun & Bradstreet, and Microsoft. And in this photo, the bottom photo, we are giving away an Epson printer to somebody who came to one of our Women's Small Business Expo events. And write that down, because that is what you can do for your sponsors. You could do contests. You could do giveaways. You could do social media campaigns. We'll talk about that in a little while. So this also led to media appearances. And Charles has this amazing radio show, Gain Mindshare, but, and I got on NBC News, a little thing called NBC. And uh, basically, you know, I got all this media exposure. And this is what sponsors can help you do. And remember I said the two reasons that people really don't make their dreams a reality are lack of exposure and lack of capital. So I got on NBC, and they even promoted uh, my website there. And I'm standing with Colleen Williams, and she's just one of the icons of television news in Los Angeles, California, the second biggest media market in the country. Um, so here's, you know, and what would you have to pay for this kind of publicity. I mean, at least, what, $25,000, uh, maybe even more. And as we all know, if you buy advertising, it doesn't have the credibility uh, that publicity and a media endorsement has. So these are some of the sponsors that my students and my clients have gotten. I've helped raise millions of dollars uh, for students and clients. And I think you'll know some of these companies, uh, Coca-Cola. UBS, Ocean Spray, Verizon, Novartis, the drug company. So I want you to start getting some ideas of companies that could sponsor you. So are you seeing that maybe you know these companies could sponsor you too? Because most of my clients are small companies. Some of them are just starting out. Most of them have never worked with a sponsor before. Office Depot, Nature Made, Southwest Airlines, Enterprise Rental Car. Here's some media appearance. Uh, these are students and clients of mine have gotten these really great media appearances. And I think you all know the power of the media. The media works in a couple of different ways. The media works as far as exposure, and the media works for credibility. Because when I was mentioned uh, earlier this year in Inc. Magazine as one of the leading experts on sponsorship, I sent it out to my whole list. I sent it out to everybody that I was featured in Inc. Magazine and gave them a link to the article, gave that to prospective clients, really was responsible for closing a lot of clients. And now it's on my biography uh, that, that I'm endorsed by Inc. Magazine. And I always get asked, too, if sponsorship, what I'm going to talk to you about, works in Canada. Now, one of my clients that I'll share with you is Canadian. And you'll see the Calgary Herald there. So this works in the US and in Canada. Here's what sponsors will fund. So make note of this. They will fund your business. So uh, if you, even if you have a consulting business, you have clients, you have a following. They will fund your event. Sponsors really like events. And that could be a live event, or it could be an online event. Sponsors absolutely love events. If you have a book, if you have a show, if you're a speaker, if you're an author, you have a fan base, you have a following, or you will have a fan base and a following. So that's what sponsors will fund. You're a nonprofit. And I want to dispel a myth here uh, that you really don't have to be a nonprofit to get corporate sponsors. I have always been a nonprofit. I have gotten the, the corporate sponsors that you have seen. And you know, a lot of my clients are for-profit businesses. 
I also do help nonprofits, but you don't have to be a nonprofit to get corporate sponsors. And of course, your projects, if you want to do a film, if you have a sports team, uh, you know, a lot of things you know, that you want to do can be sponsored. Here's some typical solutions for capital. And I want you to look at these because I'm not really talking to you in this training as an exalted authority. I've made all the mistakes. And I'm going to tell you a lot of my mistakes. I already told you about my failed businesses, the poverty trap, the abusive uh, relationship I was in. But I've made these mistakes too. And actually, there's some good things about these particular funding sources. So the first thing is loans. Okay, you could get a business loan, and most of us have gotten business loans. I've gotten them. But you know what happens? The banks look at your FICO score. The banks want you to be perfect and pristine. And I don't know of any entrepreneur that has a perfect credit score. I mean, as an entrepreneur, you're going to tank your credit score. It's like a badge of honor because as entrepreneurs, we are risk takers. And unfortunately, that shows up in our credit score. And also with a loan, you're saddled with debt. Uh, credit cards, you know, easy money, expensive money. And it's a good strategy for, for short term. I've used it, uh, but it's really not a long term strategy. Uh, joint ventures. Uh, if you're not familiar with joint ventures, that's what happens when you find somebody and they promote you and you promote them. And usually there's a product split going on, so you split 50% of, of the profits. And you know, you'll, you're, you're going to have to split 50%. Actually, you're not splitting 50% of the profits. You're splitting 50% of the sales. Um, so you know, you're going to have to give away a lot of, of money to your joint venture partner. And then there's investors. You know, we've all seen the shark tank and, and people getting investors. And people think, whoa, if I could just have an investor, that would totally be the holy grail. I, I would just be on easy street. Well, not so much, because we got into business to be you know, free and have independence and freedom. And you lose some of that when you have an investor because now you've got somebody looking over your shoulder. Now you've got somebody questioning the decisions that you make. And you don't really have the autonomy, the control, the freedom that you want. Sometimes it could even be a bad marriage. Plus, sometimes with investors, you have to give up equity in your company. And, you know, with corporate sponsored money, you get to keep 100% of the money. Here's some typical solutions for awareness. You could go and do networking meetings, OK? And that's great, but how many can you do? You know, it's, it's a slow process. And you can only see you know, x number of people at a networking meeting. You can't see thousands of people at a networking meeting. You could shoot videos, put them up, hope somebody sees them. You could do blogging, hope somebody reads the blogs. But unfortunately, most blogs, if they're not the Huffington Post or, 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 or something like that, you know, don't really get a wide readership. You could do search engine optimization. But if you do search engine optimization, you really need somebody on your team who is knowledgeable about all the changes in the algorithms. Because Google is always changing their criteria and things like backlinks that used to work are not even relevant as much anymore. So you need somebody who really keeps on top of that. And then I just put et cetera, because you could just fill in the blank of what you do for awareness, what you do to get the word out about your business. So I want to know if you're interested in a faster and a shorter way. So I want you to imagine and really think about that dream that you wrote down at the beginning of this particular training. Imagine if you could get money that you don't have to pay back. If you could be paid while creating credibility for yourself, and if you have a business partner that's really vested in your interest and wants you to succeed. So with sponsors, you can avoid the cash flow roller coaster because uh, as entrepreneurs, you know, we ride that roller coaster. We have some months where the money is flowing and birds are singing and there's rainbows and there's unicorns and everything is wonderful. And then we have some months you know, when we're struggling to make our expenses. And that's the cash flow roller coaster. And you could avoid that if there is revenue coming in from your corporate sponsors that you don't have to pay back. You're not so focused on where your next 
client is coming from. Um, because, you know, you, we, we market, we get clients, and then, you know, you stop marketing for a while, but then, and then when business goes down a little, then you have to market again. So sometimes it's kind of a vicious cycle. If any of you, if you, your, one of your dreams is to create a profitable, life-changing event or an event series or travel the country and speak and get your message out or help people, you know, help disadvantaged youth, uh, help uh, animals, you know, whatever, fill in the blank, you know, uh, be a social entrepreneur, give back to the community. Now, one of the dirty little secrets is that a lot of people do these amazing events and they spend months working on their events and, and you know and they put their blood and their sweat and their tears into these events and they get absolutely wonderful accolades and testimonials but they walk away from those events losing money they walk away losing money from events so with sponsors you're going to create profitable events and my events are profitable because of sponsors and of course you're going to add creative funding to your dreams uh, because this is a creative funding strategy. So here's the definition of sponsorship. This is my definition. And it's basically, and this is absolutely a writer downer, a writer downer. Sponsors give you money to connect them to people who buy things. It's as simple as that. People think sponsorship is so complicated. I'm making it easy. If you know people who buy things, you can get corporate sponsors. So um, that's really, <coughs> excuse me, that's my definition. It's not the industry official definition, but that is my definition of sponsorship. So I'm going to be giving you these success stories so you can kind of see how sponsorship works. Now this lady, her name is Joni, and she is a podcaster. She speaks, she does events, and she had ocean spray pay for her entire event. So remember when I said uh, that you know people do events and they don't make money? Well, she Ocean Spray paid for everything, everything, food, beverage. Um, <coughs> she did some fundraising. They donated some little cranberry teddy bears, really, really cute. And uh, she's just a solopreneur, you know, even a micropreneur, uh, just working out of her home. And she got Ocean Spray. She's worked with Habitat for Humanity and some great sponsors. So here's what sponsors give you. Uh, I want to emphasize this because they give you money you don't have to pay back with no credit checks. And I have helped pe people, um, and, and you know this is another thing that happens to entrepreneurs. I have helped people with bankruptcies get sponsors. I've helped people with judgments get sponsors. I've helped people with abysmally low FICO scores get sponsors. I've helped people get sponsors after a divorce uh, or after some legal issues. And uh, so even if you've had some bad financial stuff happen, sponsors don't care about that. They don't check your credit. That's where this is different from a loan or some traditional financing vehicle. Uh, because all they care about is that you connect them to people who buy things, that you promote their brand to your demographic, to their target consumer. You get media and public relations opportunities because if a sponsor is funding you, they have a vested interest in you. They've got skin in the game. So, so you can have access to their public relations opportunities. You can peek behind the curtain and see how big money operates, and it's really cool. And do you think that sponsors have better public relations and access to bigger public relations and marketing than you do? Absolutely. So you can utilize their public relations uh, opportunities. Free stuff, that's the technical term, free stuff. This is also called in-kind sponsorship. Write that down, in-kind sponsorship. Um, so you can get uh, cars, you could get uh, plane flights, you could get hotel rooms, you could get travel expenses paid for. And there is value in in-kind sponsorships because it is budget relieving. Uh, you, if you have printed pieces, you could get the printed pieces done by your sponsors. 
Uh, you saw the previous example where she got all the food and beverage by, from Ocean Spray and the, her whole event paid for by Ocean Spray. So this is free stuff. You get these great connections with the key influencers. People fly to events all over the country, and the express purpose of those events is the connections that you will meet at that event, because one connection with one key influencer could change the trajectory of your business success. And we've all seen that happen. We've made that one connection that we needed, and that person introduced us to opportunities and sales. and you know, it just transformed our business life and our, our, our personal lives. Uh, so you get those connections because you get connections with people who are very high up in corporate America. And then the last thing is credibility. Credibility up the yin-yang because you will get more clients if it's displayed on your website and all of your marketing materials sponsored by. And then it says uh, the name of a leading edge company there. You're going to get more attendees if you do events. You're going to get more sponsors because one sponsor leads to another. So I want to go over why a company would sponsor you because this is something that a lot of people ask me. Like, why would a company sponsor little old me? Well, I'm going to go through a couple of these things with you right now. Uh, number one is to increase brand loyalty. I really want to talk about that because um, Brand loyalty is not what it was uh, <laughs> 10 years ago. You know, there's so much choice uh, with the Internet that people, you know, really don't stay with companies the way that they used to. We all know that it is less expensive to keep a current customer than to get a new one. We all know that it's easier to make a sale to an existing customer than a new one. We have a relationship with that customer. They know us. They like us. They trust us. So. Brand loyalty is really, 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 really important to uh, sponsors. Uh, growing the customer base. Let's talk about that because conversely, no matter how big a company is, there is a natural attrition that happens. Every year people drop off as customers for one reason or another. One reason might be, hey, they just died off. Uh, another reason may be, hey, they just stopped using your product. and they. Another reason is they went to a competitor. Uh, so there's a lot of different reasons why people stop using uh, a business's service or their product. So they want to really get their customer base. Here's a really, really cool one, damage control. And that's really why I got Walmart, because Walmart called me. And uh, they said, please, can we sponsor you? And uh, that's when I was just working out of the kitchen table. I even put on an accent so it would seem like there were more people in the company <laughs> in my company. Uh, and I put them on hold, and then I got back on the line, and I said, okay. <laughs> and I can't reveal the exact amount, but it was a five-figure sponsorship. So uh, because, oh, and I'll tell you why. Because Walmart basically um, had a lot of negative press about the way they were treating the women in their company. So by sponsoring me, <coughs> by sponsoring Women's Small Business Expo, they could be friendly to the women's market. I mean, imagine if Walmart turned off women. I mean, that's their major customer base is women. So, you know, that's, way, that's how damage control, somebody else's problem, becomes your opportunity. So right now, while you've got your pen out, while you've got your paper out, think of some companies that need damage control. You know, let's, let's think of some. How about the travel industry? How about uh, the banking industry? You know, everybody hates banks, but we have to have a banking account. We have to have credit cards. But we don't like them, and we don't like the travel industry, and there's some other industries out there that, that really need damage control right now. Um, British Petroleum, BP, the, the gas, gasoline company, they're doing a lot of image advertising, a lot of damage control. Um, and then um, community responsibility. Let's talk about that because that's, they have funds allocated for community responsibility and social responsibility. Every company now has a social responsibility department. And then the last thing, of course, is driving sales. And everybody forgets about this, but if you can't help a company drive sales, you know, it's, it's not going to happen because that's why companies exist is 
to drive sales. If they don't get sales, they can't pay their people, and then they can't keep paying you. Okay, I'm going to give you another success story. This man's name is Ward Luti, and he does something a lot of us, excuse me, he does something a lot of us would absolutely love to do. He gets paid to travel. He is a spokesperson for Nature Made, and basically he is, um, you know, 50 plus, as you could see, he is a baby boomer, and he takes the baby boomers on these adventure hikes. And this generation of baby boomers is completely different from the last generation. They want to spit in the face of aging. They want to be active. They want to take hikes. hikes. They want to go kayaking. And they want adventure. So Nature Made uh, paid him to be a spokesperson. So this is the coolest thing because he's being paid to promote himself. Normally, you would have to pay to promote yourself. So he's getting paid from his sponsor. So he got coverage in the Wall Street Journal and Business Week and U.S. News and World Report and Red Book. Red Book is a monster publication. So he's not only getting paid from his sponsors, but he's getting some great exposure. So what's in it for your sponsors? I'm going to give you some sponsor benefits because if sponsors do not see benefits, they will not open up their checkbook and fund you. So I'm going to give you some benefits. And uh, please write your questions in the, ch in the chat box, because I know there must be some questions, and we'll probably take them at the end of the training, because I love to answer questions. So the first thing that's in it for your sponsors, one of the first benefits, is an award presentation. So if you do a live event or if you have an online property, you can do an award presentation. I have one of my clients who just has a website. He doesn't want to really do events, but he does an, uh, a, an award on, and he announces it on his website. He has people vote for the award, so they can get involved in, in, in crowdsourcing, and it's very cool. But if you do a live event, that's me with Citibank. Citibank was one of my sponsors. Remember I said I love banks? I love banks. I work with Citibank, I work with Bank of America, I work with Wells Fargo as a sponsor. Banks are where the money is. And you will meet the most amazing, phenomenal people in the sponsorship department. All they do is give out money, and they're really amazing people. So what I did and what you can do is you spend $25 to $100 on an award. That's what I'm holding up there. I think. Actually, he's holding up. Um, and uh, you personalize the award for your sponsor. And we like the, t the term and the languaging making a difference award. So you hand them the making a difference award. You get a professional photographer to shoot the photo. And then if you want, you could do a press release for a couple hundred dollars uh, for that particular sponsor. What Citibank did is they sent an internal memo to all of their employees saying, hey, look at us. We won the Making a Difference for Women Award. Aren't we cool? And it, imp it improves the employee morale. And when I visited their corporate, this award, this little silly award that I got done for them was in the trophy case. So they love award presentations. They love it. Plus, it's a good thing for them to sell to their boss, and it gets them to renew with you, meaning I got a multi-year contract with Citibank. So they, they paid me for the first year and then kept paying me. And a lot of my clients have done that too. And it's because of things like this. Because these are things that they can sell up you know, to their boss and say, hey, look, look what we're doing. Uh, exposure. You could give your sponsors exposure. You could put their logo on your website. You can include them in a social media campaign. One of my clients gets paid to put the logo of their sponsor on an e-zine that she sends out. You, you could get paid for blog posts. Uh, you could get, you, you could, like I said before, you could create a contest. You could do surveys for your sponsor. All of those things are exposure benefits. Speaking opportunities, and this you could do with, you know, trainings like this. If you do virtual trainings, or if you do live events, you give your sponsor a speaking opportunity. They love that. 
couponing, sampling, on-site sales. When I was working with Staples, when they were my sponsor, they gave out a coupon and it drove traffic to either their website or the retail store. Sampling, that's when you get maybe a yogurt. Somebody hands you a yogurt when you're at a community event. Uh, and you know, if you like the yogurt, then you go buy the yogurt in the store. On-site sales, if you allow on-site sales, let them know because they want to know that, hey, we can actually make sales here. We don't have to just hand out information. And then branding to a target demographic because remember, sponsors pay you to connect them to people who buy things. Here are some categories of sponsor companies, and I'm going to talk about these for a couple minutes, and I'll, I'll keep this up so you can make some notes. Uh, number one is banking and financial. Love, love, love it. Uh, big spend in the next couple of years with banking and financial because they, they do need to do damage control. Uh, you know, we, banking is not as personal as it was. A lot of people are mad at banks, and the, the image needs to be upgraded in the banking industry. Uh, communications, including telecommunications, uh, phone systems, cell phones, uh, smartphones, all those things. Uh, that it could be tablets, all kinds of communication devices. Insurance. Insurance has been called the invisible bankers because there's a lot of money in insurance. And you could see, if you turn on television, that insurance companies are very competitive with each other. They're all, you know, comparing rates. If you turn on uh, and you watch uh, Flow on Progressive, you know, she says, okay, here's our rates, here's Allstate, here's Farmers. You know, they, they're, com they're blatantly competitive with each other. So insurance is a great category. I've worked, uh, I've had HealthNet Insurance as a sponsor. Um, I'm just going to talk about a couple other things. Consumables. Consumables are things that you have to keep buying. Like in the previous example that I gave of Ward and the 50 plus market, the baby boomers, and that is a great demographic, baby boomers, by the way. Um, nature made vitamins. You have to keep taking vitamins, and then you have to keep going and buying vitamins. So that's, that's known as a consumable because you have to keep consuming it and then buying more. Uh, electronics, great, you know, including computers, peripherals, software. Uh, we already talked about hotels and airlines and gasoline. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is beverage because beverage is a huge category in sponsorships. And anybody who's been to a sporting event uh, kind of sees that there's a beer sponsor and there's a soft drink sponsor and there's a bottled water sponsor. And, you know, it's just a, a major monster category in corporate sponsorships. Now this is a success story and I'd like to share her with you because this lady basically talks about holistics. She talks about organics and she talks about alternative medicine. So she's kind of into all that stuff. Uh, basically uh, she got breast cancer and had a very, very advanced stage, stage three breast cancer. Three doctors told her she would need a complete mastectomy me. And she said, I really don't think I want to do that. So she found out how to heal breast cancer naturally without surgery. She wrote a book called Treatable and Beatable. She's got a message to tell women that they don't have to cut their bodies, that they can heal cancer in alternative ways. So you may think, oh, you know, I don't know if sponsors are going to sponsor me because I work in holistics. I work work in you know, organics and natural medicine and spirituality. Well, she got a foot detox company, she got a vitamin company, she got a cancer center, and an organic tea company because those are part of her particular methodology. So I just wanted to let you know that. Here's some common mistakes. Trying to reinvent the wheel. Okay, look at something that's been successful and just kind of copy that instead. Not enough benefits, and we're going to talk about the, we've talked about some benefits already, but you really need to have a whole lot of benefits uh, in order for the sponsor to open up that checkbook and, and fund you. All numbers and no emotions. We're going we're to talk about this. And not asking for enough money. 
Okay, so right now I'm going to talk about the sponsor proposal because in, in order to get the sponsor dollars, you have to have a professional industry standard proposal. If you are not willing to do the proposal, don't even bother because you know this is your the difference between success and failure. And a lot of the times, the decision on whether to fund you or not is made without you being in the room. So the proposal is what does the selling for you. So here's what's in the proposal. The goals for the sponsors, OK? The goals for the sponsors, the story of the property. What you have now is considered a property. The property is the entity that is available for sponsorship. So you want some storytelling in there. The sponsor benefits, the media opportunities, and remember, you don't have to pay for media. You can have a media sponsor. And the levels and fees, you're going to ask for the money. And I'm going to tell you how much money you could make here. So make it more than just about the money. Uh, my company does the sponsor proposal in a whole different way than anybody else because we make it about the story. And this is the story in the beginning of my sponsor proposal. The crowd stood and cheered loudly as she approached the stage, arrived at the podium, and received a hug. Tears flowed as she realized what an impact this event would have on her. She thanked the woman who had made it possible. Basically, it talks about a teenage girl who wanted to come to Women's Small Business Expo so badly that she had local businesses uh, basically raise her tuition. It's a human story because I have never had a company sponsor me. I've had a human being make the decision to sponsor me. So play at the heartstrings. Let them see your humanity. Get vulnerable. And if you don't want to share your story, share the story of somebody that you have helped through the work that you do. And this will make your proposal stand out from like 99% of the proposals out there. Here's what you should ask from each sponsor, OK? This is definitely a writer down, because this is how much money you can make with corporate sponsors. You're going to ask for 10000 25000 50000 and $100,000. Now, that is per year, and there is no limit to the amount of sponsors that you can have. So this can be quite lucrative. Can you see that? Can you see that this is really, really cool? Here's how to get your first sponsors, because um, a lot of you have worked with sponsors before. You've seen what sponsors can do for you. And then others have not worked with sponsors yet. So here's how to get your first sponsors. You leverage the media to get your corporate sponsors. You go on shows like Charles' show, and you go on media shows. Uh, and then you leverage those to get corporate sponsors. You get media sponsors. And with media sponsors, it's basically a trade deal. So you give the same sponsor proposal, and you tell your media, you know, hey, I'll give you a trade. And you've got a media sponsor. Powerful collaborations. You find people to collaborate with that have a bigger following than you. And you do some collaborations with them to build your following and your audience. You want to have a long-term plan. You don't want to have a plan for just the next six months, but you want to have a plan for the next year and then the next three years. And a killer sponsor proposal, total killer sponsor proposal. Um, I want to share this story with you. Um, her name is Cynthia. And she wanted to teach internet safety to families, because we all know that the internet is the most amazing thing, and it's changed our lives more than anything. Um, but it can be a dangerous place, and it can be a dangerous place for kids uh, and teenagers. So she wanted to teach families to use it responsibly and to prevent a lot of tragedies that we've heard about. And she is sponsored by Verizon. Remember I told you that telecommunications and cell phone and smartphone companies are really good sponsors. So her whole thing is sponsored by Verizon. Relationships are key. So you want to introduce yourself by phone rather than email. 
You want to make appointments to see your sponsor if you can, like a live face-to-face -face appointment. If not, you know, you could do it by the phone. And when you talk, when you have that first initial conversation with your sponsor, you kind of want to draw them out a little bit. Ask what their goals and visions are. You know, you don't want to just go into your presentation. Ask them about their demographics. Ask them about their upcoming campaigns. Really have them tell you some things about their company. And then you could say, oh, OK, well, this is what you've told me you want to accomplish. Here's how I can help you. Here's another success story. Remember, our, you know, remember guys, <laughs> stay with me, the men on this call, because this is also about women. But I wanted to illustrate something here. Uh, this is a women's conference. But on the bottom right, it says PSEG. So one of their sponsors is a local utility company. So write that down. Utility companies can sponsor you. And I don't know about you, but my utility bills are not cheap. And uh, <laughs> so the utility companies are really flush, and they give back to the community. So they can sponsor you. Also, you can see that they got uh, Enterprise Rental Car on the left, and Aetna Insurance, and Novartis, the drug company, and this uh, New Jersey Economic Development Authority. This was in New Jersey. But I really want you to see the PSEG that they got sponsored by the utility company, because that's cool. So I'm summarizing. You can get sponsors if you're just starting out, if you have no experience, if you want money you don't have to pay back, if you want to change people's lives, and if you have big dreams. And maybe now is the time to go back to that dream that you wrote down in the beginning of this particular training. Because I want to share with you a resource that I have. Because I've given you as much information as I could in the time that we have together. But I do have a home study course, and I just wanted to make you aware of that. Because some of you are saying, man, this is great. I need some more information, and I want some more information on getting some corporate sponsors. So this is the resource that I want to tell you about. And this is my life's work. I've been doing this for 13 years and have helped people raise millions of dollars with the information that is contained in this particular course. So you get information on how to get sponsors to pay you ten to $100,000 a year, the 10 biggest mistakes people make, how to create your sponsor proposal, which sponsors to approach, which ones to avoid. There are some companies to absolutely avoid. So I mean, what is your time worth? You know, you could really, you could go and try to hit the pavement and only, find, only to find out that that company doesn't even do sponsorships. How to craft your pitch letter. We didn't even talk about the pitch letter, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. And then, of course, to know how much money to ask for and not sell yourself short. So I already kind of told you that, but you know, asking for too little money will absolutely work against you. And then getting your sponsors to renew again and again. Remember I told you you could get those multi-year contracts. It tells you how to do that. So if you want to check this out, go to wealthybaglady.com slash special if you want like a little sneak peek on this particular uh, home study training. So you get immediate online access. The minute you get this particular course, it is delivered to your computer or your mobile device or your smartphone. So if you have like 15 to 20 minutes on a lunch break, you can do this. And by the way, I work with leaders. This is you need to know information, and you could do this course in a few hours. Uh, it is no fluff need to know. You're, you're not going to have to spend 40 hours on this particular course and days and weeks learning it. It's, it's quick. That's a $697 value. You also get the physical course. You get eight CDs. You get exercises. You get transcripts. So if you like to read, or if you like to hear the information, whatever modality you like to learn at, it is there for you. And that is a $1,497 value. You also get the sponsor proposal template. And I want to tell you a little bit about this template. 
because this is the template that I wish I had 13 years ago because I spent $75,000 <laughs> getting my first sponsor proposal done because there was no template for me. I had to basically do it the hard way, make a lot of mistakes. Oh, and it took me six months. So this is proprietary. You can only get it from me. So the sponsor proposal template, you fill in the blanks. It saves you from the agony and the irony of looking at a blank screen. Um, so you know, this after you fill out the sponsor proposal template, you could do it in an afternoon, and you have a finished sponsor proposal. You get the tips guide. Once again, short, quick need to know information on the tips guide. $1,497 value. The pitch letter, let's talk about that. The pitch letter is your cover email that you send to the sponsors. You have to have certain languaging in the pitch letter because you want to create a buzz in that company and then you're going to be more successful with your sponsors. You want them to forward your email because decisions are made in teams and in committees. So the pitch letter is really important. That is their first impression of you. And then the telephone script. And the cool thing is, if you don't want to call the sponsors, you could have an assistant do it. You could job out like 80% of it. Just do the initial work and then have somebody else do the calling. If you want to check it out on the website, it's wealthybaglady.com slash special. This is a $997 value. The agreement, OK? Once you get your first sponsor, you will want an agreement because you're going to be working with a company that is bigger than you. So you really want to protect your rights in these deals. So I mean, imagine having to pay an attorney to come up with an agreement. And the attorney probably doesn't even know sponsorship, so they're going to learn on your dime. You're going to be paying them to learn. So I've already done that for you. And this is a beautiful one-page contract. So this is a $997 value. You couldn't even get that from an attorney at $997. OK, so people have said to me, they've said, well, OK, you've taught me how to get the sponsors. Now who do I call? So this is the gold directory of sponsors. In the gold directory of sponsors, there are over 500 companies with complete contact information that can sponsor you. And this has just been updated. So I mean, once again, imagine if you had to look up these companies, if you had to find the right person. You know, when I dealt with FedEx, I mean, there's thousands of people in FedEx. That was one of my sponsors. How did I get the right person? Well, my team has done the research. So if you want to deal with sponsors, my team has researched who to call, phones, emails, etc. the gold directory of sponsors. This is a $497 value. I believe that's pretty low, actually. Uh, I am doing a live event. It's called the Sponsor Secrets Seminar. It is in Los Angeles October 1st through 3rd of 2013. And basically, what you're going to do here is we are going to groom you to get corporate sponsors. You're going to create your action plan, and you're actually going to meet sponsors. We will have sponsors there for you to talk to. You can pitch them. Uh, uh, you can ask them all of your questions. Uh, and the event is, you know, it's recommended, it's nice, but it's not mandatory. So if you cannot make the Sponsor Secret Seminar, we'll give you another Sponsor Acceleration Program of equal value. And that is $1,997 value. These are just some other pictures from the Sponsor Secret Seminar, because I wanted to share with you who comes. We've got Wells Fargo represented. We've got Junior Achievement represented. Susan G. Komen, Octagon, huge agency in sponsorship, and Herbalife. Uh, so you can ask these companies all of your questions. You can sit down with them one on one with these sponsors. OK, this is cool. Remember I told you that I spent $75,000 on my sponsor proposal. Well, I'm going to give you that sponsor proposal because you can go to the internet and maybe you could find a proposal that somebody else used, but that proposal 
could have been like rejected 50 times. So you don't know if that proposal was successful. So you might be copying failure. So this proposal was raised over $70,000. So I thought, well, OK, 10% of the value is $7,000. That is the value of this sponsor proposal that has gotten me, oh my god, the brands that I told you about, uh, like I said, FedEx, HealthNet Insurance, Marriott Hotels. Uh, it has gotten me most recently Microsoft. So I mean, great, you know, this, this is proven. Um, one more success story I want to share with you. This is Brian Kaplovitz, and he wanted to do an event for young entrepreneurs. And you can see he's a young entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs under 40, he raised $100,000 to fund his event from one sponsor. And he also funded his business with that sponsor. So if you are doing an event, don't just get money for the event. Get money, like I said, for the whole year. Bundle all the events together, because it will also fund your business. And here's some of his uh, you know, sponsors and clients, American Express, Denny's, Johnson & Johnson, Home Depot. So I want to summarize what you get here. You get the audio course, the workbook, the transcript, the goal directories the agreement, the template, the sponsor proposal template, the sample proposal, the tips guide, the pitch letter, the sponsor secret seminar. And this is something I didn't even mention before, because this is a self-paced home study, but you are not on your own, because you can have me there to critique your proposal and to help you do your proposal. So. Um, you know, I'm not even putting a value on that because this is where it's my time and I will talk to you personally and help you craft a proposal, help you craft a plan to get your corporate sponsors. I'll give you my comments, I'll give you my feedback, every advantage out there in the sponsor world. So if you add the total value, it's over $15,000, 15179 to be exact. So if you want to take advantage of the Attracting Corporate Sponsors Home Study, here is your price. You go to wealthybaglady.com slash special, and it's three payments of only $397, or one payment of $997. It is completely guaranteed. The one payment option, you save $200. That is your best value. And it's 90 days guarantee, no questions asked. So there is no risk in ordering attracting corporate sponsors. So I want to thank you so much for being here. And I think this is a good time to take some questions. Well, <laughs> first of all, um, you know, as, uh, as always, Lynn, that was an awesome uh, just another awesome presentation. We do have questions, and everybody, I'm going to encourage you. Oh, we've got a couple of questions now, but whatever your questions are, go ahead and put them in the uh, question box. So if you see it right down there in your panel, or what you want to do is just type them right in there, and I will put them to uh, Linda here on the call. And uh, let's see, my first question here is from CJ. And uh, CJ's question is, and actually it's a good one, probably one everybody has, what happens, uh, Linda, when there's money left over? What, what happens? You know, we, you, you, do a, you, you do a program, I guess they, they, they fund you, and then you don't spend everything. Well, what happens with the additional money? You put it in your pocket. <laughs> that sounds a little flippant, but here's the thing. You always ask for more money than you need because we are in business to make a profit. And sponsors get it. They are in business to make a profit, and they get that we are in business to make a profit. And here's another common thing that people uh, misunderstand. They calculate their expenses, and let's say it's going to cost you, I don't know, $50,000 to put on an event. So then they ask for $50,000 in sponsorships. Well, this is flawed because, first of all, you haven't made any money. You're basically kind of you know doing it all for nothing. Uh, and you know, it, it, it's just it, sponsorship is based on value, 
It is based on value. It is not based on your expenses. I'm going to give you an example of this, CJ. You can do an event and you can spend $500 on a banner that has your sponsor's name on it. So you've spent $500. You can charge your sponsor $5,000 for that same banner because it has a perceived value to your sponsor of $5,000 because of all the exposure and impressions that it's getting. So you always want to ask for a more money than you need, and you keep the rest. And sponsors will not ask you for a budget. Sponsors do not care how you spend their money. I've never been asked for a budget. My clients have never been asked for a budget. Sponsors care that you fulfill your contract. So if you say you'll do certain things for that sponsor, absolutely, they're going to want you to do that. But they really don't care how you spend the money after that. All right. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, fantastic. I appreciate that. Thank you for the question, uh, CJ, and uh, awesome, awesome, Linda. Okay, my friend uh, Jerry, Jerry Gilbers, good to, good to see you. Um, Jerry's question is, Linda, how quickly can you get a sponsor? Okay, um, if you're going after the top-tier sponsors, the big corporates, the one that, that I've talked about, it's going to take you eight months to a year. If you're going after second tier sponsors, meaning, um, write this down. Here's another thing that I want to tell you guys about. There's top tier and there's second tier sponsors. So the top tier, let's say the banking industry, I'll come back to that. The top tier is Bank of America. A second tier sponsor would be your local community bank or first bank or ally bank or, you know, a smaller player. Uh, that doesn't take as long. That may take, you know, a few months. Uh, but while you're waiting for those corporate sponsors, be, be, be getting your media. Be working out deals with your media sponsors. So then you could leverage the media sponsors to get the cash sponsors. Sponsorship is kind of a long tail strategy um, because it is a relationship business. So it'll take just a little while to form those relationships. Great, great, uh, great answer. Jerry, does that uh, help you out there? Okay, appreciate uh, appreciate the question. And um, my next question here, and uh, 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 I'm going to try your name, and I'm going to be I'm known as the butcher from Harrisburg when it comes from name. So I'm going to try this Mahara. I hope that's uh, correct. Uh, Mahara's question is, Linda, as far as your base information, is it important for your business to have a very nice website? And she's asking that, she says, because she is working with a nonprofit. Yes, you should have a nice website because sponsors will check out your website. And it's, you know, what do we do when we want to do business with a company? We check out their website. You know, it's very easy to do. It's, you could do it quickly. And, yes, yeah, sponsors are going to check out your website. And that's really how I got those really great sponsors when I was first starting with no experience or following, I did have a nice website and I did have a great sponsor proposal. So yeah, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna have a nice website. Fantastic. Linda, I know that some folks um, are in the process of uh, even though they're consultants, they're building followings. There's some people on here who've actually uh, purchased a product on how to start their own their own web show. And um, I've actually got a friend of mine on here who uh, does web shows for people and uh, so so in order of things do you need to have a following before you enter this process or is this something that you should be building as you go through that let's say 8 to 12 months how, how does that how does it come uh, in terms of order of things I want you to be working on your proposal and getting yourself ready for sponsors while you're building your following. Because remember, we said it takes a few months. You're going to be building your relationships with your sponsors before you know they're going to write you out that check. So it's something, remember, I started when I had no following. But I sold them on the concept. I sold them on the demographic of women business owners. And this is why you really want to know about your demographic. And I'll tell you a little bit about the demographic. My demographic of women business owners is a $2.5 trillion market. Women are starting businesses at twice the rate of men. <clears throat> and women make or influence 
85% of the purchasing decisions in America. So I was armed with all that information. So whatever your demographic or your target market is, take a half an hour, do a Google search, type in statistics, you will get really amazing information, and that's what you will give to your sponsors. Fantastic. No, that's great. And uh, now, Linda, I've got, I've actually got, I've got three friends on, and all three are musicians. One's vocal, one is uh, uh, instrumental, and, and the other is, uh, other is kind of orchestral, you could say. Uh, have you worked with musicians, and what kinds of things do they do um, you know, when it comes to sponsorship, or have you come across that? Okay, as a musician, I want you to be building your list all the time, and I have worked with musicians, and I, I sort of have to retrain the musicians in a way. <laughs> the ones on your call kind of are, are more business-minded, but um, whenever you play, do a giveaway of a CD or something where you could start building your following. Have people fill out something where they could win a CD, so you'll start building your list, because once you have, you know, a great following, you know, you've got the keys to the kingdom because not only will you be more successful with your sponsors, but you can sell them other things. You can, you know, get more gigs. You could get more people to buy your music and get more people to spread the word of mouth about where you'll be appearing. So I want you, This it's kind of the same thing. Just kind of learn about your demographic, about the people who see you some hot markets in music right now, country, gospel, classic rock, uh, you know, hip-hop, rap. Uh, you could get uh, sponsors who are in beverage. Beverage is a big, big sponsor in the music world. And even, you know, you can see what Beyonce is doing with Pepsi. They just signed her, um, you know, for God knows. I mean, multi, multi-million dollars. That's what they're paying Beyonce. And it was really interesting because I saw Pepsi, uh, a representative from Pepsi speak recently, and they consider themselves to be a music company rather than a beverage company. They really want to be on the forefront of introducing new artists uh, to people. So think of beverage sponsors, uh, consumable sponsors are good, food service is good, you know, food products are great sponsors for you, apparel is really good as far as sponsors for musicians, shoes, clothing, all that stuff because your audience is very conscious of what they wear. Um, just trying to think of some other particular categories. Oh, and of course, um, telecommunications is really important and computers uh, in the music industry right now. Oh, that's great. And uh, and I'm looking, I'm looking at the list here, and I know of two. Oh, no three bloggers in particular and I know that you've had um, just a, a you've got a you've got a particular way that you kind of kind of talk about this when it comes to bloggers and even podcasters um, what can you do in terms of vision wise when you you know when it's content that is your kind of your, your your thing that's what you're producing what 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 should they kind of be thinking about Linda um, in this area of corporate sponsorship Okay, well, let's talk about blogs first, um, because um, when Epson was my sponsor, I was paid to do some blog posts. So, you know, I would post normal blog posts, and then I would post a sponsored blog post every once in a while. So every post, you know, cannot be a sponsored post. You've got to be posting, you know, really high content, and then a sponsored post. Or you could work your sponsor into some post that's already going out. And uh, sometimes you might want to actually disclose that they are a sponsor of yours just to kind of keep some integrity about it. So that's really how you do it. And if you've built up a following with your blog of people who really follow you and trust you, you know, they're really going to want to do, um, go with your sponsor and, and, you know, at least try something. Now, the way that the blog post, the way that I did the blog post was Ebsen um, wanted to do a survey. Uh, Write down surveys because a lot of companies want to survey groups. So I led them to a survey, and it said, you know, three people who fill out the survey will win a $100 American Express card. 
you could lead them to a survey, you could lead them to a contest, you could lead them to some kind of a social media campaign. But there should be something attached to that blog post where it's kind of an engagement opportunity for the sponsor to engage with the people who read your blog. So you could kind of think about what that is. It could be them sending in a video. It could be a lot of things. It could be them writing a testimonial, uh, you know, whatever. So that's how you do the blog post. Now, with a podcast, uh, you can do, you know, a 30-second spot before the podcast. Uh, you could do a 30-second spot after the podcast and say, you know, we hope you've enjoyed our podcast. You know, it was brought to you by this particular sponsor. And then give them a call to action. Don't just say, uh, it was brought to you by Microsoft. Say, you know, here's a special that they're running at the Microsoft store right now. Go check out this particular coupon code or this particular special or something. So give them a specific call to action. You could actually interview your sponsor on your podcast and you know make the make the topic something that is relevant to your listeners and bring your sponsor in as an expert on that particular topic. So they're going to get some high content because they don't want to listen to a commercial. And here's the thing. Sponsors don't want to be obnoxious. They don't want to be in your face. They just, they kind of want to be in the background. And it's understated and it's very elegant. Oh, that's great. Well, that's great from a uh, from an audio guy. That's that's fantastic. Um, I do have a question here from uh, Mickey, and he's actually asked me this question. I think before when you when you did the radio spot with me, and uh, I, I mean I've been able to get this question to you. Then he's asking. Um, he said, now, would this be useful for getting sponsors for a large, uh, he says, 230 cadets Marine Corps junior ROTC unit that is a, a, that is a nonprofit, or would he need a bigger story to approach sponsors? Not really, because when I was doing Women's Small Business Expo, I had like 100 people in the room, and I got sponsors and that paying me five and six figures. So it's really, you got to figure out, like, what else you could do for them besides the people, you know, who are going to show up live. Right. So, you know, you've got the cadets. You know, what about their parents? You know, can you, can you market to the parents? Can you send them home with something? Uh, can you, you know, you hand out some, some information? Uh, can you, like I said, you know, I keep coming back to contests because they love contests. And kids, you know, kids love contests. You know, can you do Instagram? Uh, I was at uh, the, the movies the other day at, at the Arclight Cinema, which is a chain we have here, and they had an Instagram contest, and you take your picture uh, in front of the movie theater, and then one person gets to win, you know, they get, it was a great prize. It was like a, a private showing for 200 of your closest friends uh, at that particular theater, you know, if you just send in an Instagram photo. So... With the advent of social media, we could do all this really, really cool stuff. And sponsors really like social media because it is trackable. It is measurable. They can control that. And engagement now is one of the big buzzwords in sponsorship. So figure out how the sponsors can engage with these ROTC guys. But i got to tell you, the real money is with the parents because, you know, the, the parents right. are the ones who, right. who buy things. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, Linda, we are up on, uh, we're up at 15 minutes past, and I know I've kept yeah, you we are. a little yeah. farther, and I, I certainly appreciate you staying on and asking some questions. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could give us that link again. It's wealthybaglady.com forward slash special, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Linda's got uh, a special going on, and uh Man, I mean, you know, just even on the call, the, the, the information you put together is awesome. Go ahead, Linda. Can I give away something free? Now, what would I, what would I sound like <laughs> if I turned you down and said you couldn't? Okay. All right. I'm going to um, you know, I'm gonna give a free gift to everybody, too, as, as well as, uh, you know, all the, everything I've shared. Uh, if you want something absolutely free, this is my gift to you, go to WealthyBagLady.com. And you could get the number one secret for getting corporate sponsors if you just go to WealthyBagLady.com. All right. So everybody go head right on over there to uh, WealthyBagLady.com. And I know that um, 
I found out last, I, it looks like you're, you're on Facebook. I saw you over there. So I think pe folks can check you out over there too. But uh, for the for the secret, going over to WealthyBagLady.com. And uh, if you can, uh, just connect with Linda every place where she is. I can't, um, I really can't put into to words how much, um, you know, I think this, this session really means uh, both to me personally and I think, you know, to everybody here because, again, you know, this really allows us to readjust our thinking and then to reach back to some of those dreams that maybe we gave up on because most of us give up on them because we don't think we have the money to get them started. Uh, well, I'm glad to be able to talk to you guys, provide the information. It's really an honor to be able to share this information with you. And, you know, I just want to let you know, you know, your business does not have to be perfect. Uh, you know, you do not have to be at a certain place to do this. If I could do this, anybody could do this. So just hold your head up high. Know that you have quality. Know that you have value to offer your corporate sponsors. And it's absolutely been my pleasure to spend this time with you. Awesome. Well, everybody, um, again, um, head on over to WealthyBagLady.com forward slash special. Um, and uh, check out what Linda has for you over there. And uh, definitely, 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 you know, we appreciate Linda. And I appreciate you uh, for being here. Thank you for spending your Thursday evening with me. And uh, it looks like you've got the rest of the evening to kind of think about what you, what you heard. It's been, it's been awesome as always. And uh, so everybody, if you have any questions, uh, send them over to me. If you think of something tonight and you want me to send an email to Linda, I'll do that for you uh, tomorrow morning and uh, when I send her the recording. And uh, now, if you're listening by archive, um, all the same things apply. Uh, head on over to WealthyBagLady.com forward slash special. Or, um, again, if you have a question, you're, you're listening to this archive and it's later on, send me your question. I'll forward it on over to Linda. So everybody, uh, thank you very much for being here. Linda, thank you so much again. And um, have a great night and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care.